good afternoon from the Magic Kingdom parking lot. We are headed in today because number one, they have added a bunch more decorations to the castle to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Magic Kingdom. Number two, they are updating the Jungle Cruise to make it more inclusive. So they've already started doing that. They're leaving the ride open while they're updating it. So they've already started taking a few things out. So we're gonna try to ride Jungle Cruise and see if we can see some of the changes that they've made. And then we're also gonna kind of like look around, see if we can see any new merch, anything new going on at Magic Kingdom. So let's do it. Monorail. First stop, the ferry boat. Ooh, that one's all full. This one's just getting people onto it. All right, we have made it to the Magic Kingdom. They're still working on the railroad. Not 100% sure what they're doing, but it's been behind Scrim for a while. The railroad also hasn't been running while they're doing construction on Tron. Also wanted to point out, they are still doing facial recognition tests for entering into the park. Not all of them, it's just kind of one spot over there. From the train station, we're actually gonna turn past City Hall, past the firehouse. We're gonna head over here to the barber shop because one thing that many people might not know is that there is a barber shop inside of the Magic Kingdom where you used to be able to get haircuts and they have since closed it because of coronavirus. But we're hoping that one day it will open again so that Jackson can come here and get his very first haircut. I've actually gotten a haircut here before and we'll put a link to that video in the description down below so you can see what the process is like. So here outside of the Emporium, there is some remnants of Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom, which is an interactive card game that they have stopped doing. But you can see this is where you would tap your magic band. You can kind of see a screen in the back of the window back there where you used to play, where you had cards and you had to fight against villains. And you would hold up your card and that would have different effects on the villain. And we've got a whole video about this and we'll put a link to that in the description down below. But the whole reason I bring up Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom is because they have started to remove some of these windows or some of these different Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom locations around the park. We'll go check out where one used to be right now. So over here on the right hand side of Main Street is the Main Street Cinema. And it's been like this for a while, but this is our first time going in and seeing the removed Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom window. And this is a place where you used to be able to buy art back here, but it seems like it's just candy and stuff now. So this door right here is where the window used to be. And now, it's a door and a wall. Hmm. Yeah, you can kind of see how it sticks out from the wall just a little bit. This also used to be an indent like this. And now it's just a door. Yeah, and it looks like they just sell candy and stuff in here. You can sort of see how it used to be kind of like artwork behind the candy back there. But that's just the wallpaper. Also, it seems like they have a lot of items that the Main Street Bakery has. So if the line to get into the Main Street Bakery is too long, just pop over here, get yourself a Rice Krispie Treat or a candied apple. Let's pull over to the left-hand side of Main Street and head into the Emporium. See if they have any new merch in here. Not looking like anything too new, just kind of like this 2021 merch. I feel like I've never seen this tank top before. It says 2021 and it's got each zero is a different Mickey face. A nice tank top. It's got very wide shoulders on it though. Let's see, this is $35. So Mother's Day is coming up on May 9th and they have a whole section in here that says celebrate mom but it kind of looks like it's just Beauty and the Beast stuff. A nice Beauty and the Beast stained glass window. This is hard to see. I bet you it looks really neat with the light behind it. It's also very thick. <laughs> Don't worry, I got it. Nothing to worry about here. I, I think. I don't know what happened. Hold on. So this is $50. It's a piece of stained glass. Oh, it looks a lot better this side. You got the rose, you got Belle. Everybody always calls him Prince Adam, but I don't know if that's his real name. I don't know if that's canon or not. Have some chip cups for $22.99. The chip is not real. It's kind of like a little indent in the actual mug. And then they have a Lumiere cake stand. $44.99. It's very heavy. Just over here at the t-shirt wall and there's some shirts that I've never seen before. And these are adult tees are $22 each when you buy two of them or $25 a piece if you're just buying one. I like this shirt a lot. Like a rainbow print with the Walt Disney World logo and then fireworks. I'm missing fireworks for sure. Also like this Mickey taking a selfie. Here, oh, here's another one with all four of the icons. It's got Tower of Terror, Spaceship Earth, Cinderella Castle, and the Tree of Life, and then a gigantic Mickey over top of them with some fireworks. 
Really, I'm missing fireworks. I hope they bring them back soon. I like the color of this shirt. It says, to all who come to this happy place, welcome. Which was the opening line of Walt Disney's speech when opening Disneyland. Also, home with the O is an earth that is also shaped like Mickey. And then I like this one up here. My favorite place with my favorite people. Mickey, Goofy, and Donald. I feel like this should have been a different... Should have been the new Mickey Shorts, Goofy, Mickey, and Donald, because they're best friends in that, for sure. But, like, I know that they're best friends always, but I feel like they have a very special relationship in those new Mickey Shorts. I feel like this is a good way to go through life, like Hey Hey. Everything, everything works out for Hey Hey in that movie, doesn't it? But also, Forky says, I'm just happy to be here. So these native shoes, I tried them on as an adult, and I thought they were too narrow for me. But every person that we've talked to that has a kid that's wearing these, they said that their kid loves them. Super lightweight, waterproof, feel kind of cushy. They're kind of exactly like Crocs, like they're the same material as Crocs, but they look more like shoes. So these are $45 and they have Mickey all over them. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna buy Jackson just some native brand shoes rather than the Disney native shoes because the Disney ones are more expensive because they have Mickey on them. Whereas you can get just regular non-branded native shoes on Amazon for a little bit cheaper. Yeah, here on Amazon, just a regular pair of blue native shoes are $35. So you save about $10 without getting Mickey on them. They have a section of youth graphic tees, just like the adult ones that we're showing you. Ooh, kind of like this one a lot. It's like a Mickey print made up of smaller Mickey heads. That's a really neat shirt. We have a cavalcade coming through. We got Clarabelle, Max, and Goof. And Jose and Panchito on the back. All right, we're down by the castle now, and I just want to have a look at some of the decorations that they're putting up for the 50th anniversary of Magic Kingdom. You can see they're almost done. I think they still have to put some of these little, like, twirly bits on the turrets out here. Now that we're a little bit closer, we can see some of the draperies. I think they've got gems at the top of them. They're kind of like a bluish with a gold that almost has a rose gold iridescence around it. You can really see the rose gold on these things. I don't know what you would call this, just drapery, I guess? But it's not made of actual drapes. It's like formed fiberglass. And we got some jewels around these turrets up here. And then some metal ribbon around the very peaks of the castle. And the ribbon kind of has a, it's, it's a gold color, but it almost has a little bit of an iridescence to it. Like you can almost see some rose coloring coming through. Just a little tiny bit when the sun hits it just right. It's nice. I like the way that it looks and I like that they are decorating it for the 50th. And that's why they painted the castle too. So it's got a fresh coat of paint on it and some lovely embellishments. I do wish there was a different way of installing these without this blue cage underneath. Because when you get close, that blue cage is very pronounced. And as I've said before, I am waiting for a fireworks show to happen again. Hopefully we get a little bit of an addition to Happily Ever After with the 50th, October 1st, which is the actual 50th anniversary of Magic Kingdom. I also want to point out that they re-poured the stage here. We've got all kinds of interesting drains and maybe like fog effects, but then we've got these tie downs too. I wonder what those are going to be used for. Maybe some inflatable thing could be over here. I think these might be conduit for electrical. Yeah, I'm interested to see what they have in store for the 50th because I know that they're going to have some some form of stage show because why else would they redo the stage? If they're not going to do a stage show, they should have just left the stage as it was, but they're rebuilding the stage from the ground up. Like there used to be podiums over here and stairs and so they're definitely doing something. We also know that they're not done installing the embellishments on the castle because the moat is still drained and there are still lifts down here. Oh, the line for cheeseburger spring rolls is so long. But we're not getting spring rolls right now. We're headed into Adventureland. See if we can get on the Jungle Cruise. Last time we rode the Jungle Cruise, we got in line out here, outside of Adventureland. And it was about a 60 minute wait. So anything shorter than here, I'm happy with. We were just passing by Sunshine Tree Terrace and I looked on the menu and I noticed they have fried pot stickers now which I've never seen this before. We'll have to give these a try when we get off of the Jungle Cruise. They look kind of good. Pork and vegetable with orange sesame ginger sauce. Huh. 
And then we can get like a nice soft serve, like a Dole Whip with it, or the I Lava You Float Fanta Strawberry Soda and Passion Fruit Flavor served with Dole Whip Orange and topped with popping candy. I think that'll definitely be what we're getting for lunch. All right, we are getting in line for Jungle Cruise. It's a 35 minute wait. I am getting in line at 12.05 and we'll see what time we actually get on the ride. We've made it up to the building here and it says now that it's a 45 minute wait. We're only 10 minutes into the wait right now and we're moving pretty good. We are getting closer and it's been 20 minutes so far. Oh, I also wanted to show you, this is the wheelchair accessible boat. They're opening it up right now so that they can load a wheelchair on. As a reminder, passengers traveling on the Nile should consider wearing brightly colored clothing during their cruise. I actually just met this family. They're very nice. There you go. Lowers it down. Very cool. We've almost made it up to the front and it has been about 30 minutes. So by the time we get on the boat, I'm sure it's gonna be 35 minutes. See exactly the amount of time they told us we were gonna wait. So I'm not gonna show the entire Jungle Cruise. I'm just gonna show anything that I noticed that is different or has been changed. Well, I said I was going to only show stuff that was new or that was being changed. But I love the Jungle Cruise too much. Now listen to the disappointment in my voice because you guys fall for that joke every time. But it does sound like enough inspiration for us to go deeper and deeper into the jungle. Oh, Looks like one of those constricting relationship types you just don't want to get wrapped up in. Anonymous, her name is Ina. Everybody say hi, Ina. Yeah, she really wanted us to make a point of that introduction. However, she looks a little angry at the moment. Perhaps one of them told her to think outside the box. But what do I know? <laughs> The most exciting part of our journey, which is over here on the right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the water first. They introduce you, the last side of water. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. You can go ahead and take as many as you want without embarrassment. I mean, after all, they do it their trunks on. I know, I know, I just a little bit of dry here. Right? It's what I do. I've been to be the most dangerous because it's called the return to civilization. So we are going to ask that for your safety, please keep all hands, arms, legs, and feet inside the boat until we approach the dock. This is where Trader Sam I used to be. Also ready for tonight's Let's see, they quiz. took out the Trader dock. Sam and Animatronic all together. I don't know where you guys are. Now we've just got this camouflage net. I just net. don't understand why the monkeys decided to paint my Jeep blue. Red is clearly my color. I just don't know how they did it that fast. So the two main things that were changed on this ride were Trader Sam wasn't there and the pole that the rhino has run the explorers up is not there anymore. So the pole in the rhino scene has been removed because there are five new characters that have been run up the rhino pole, as well as one new character that is the main character of the Jungle Cruise. Her name is Alberta Falls. Uh, her father was Albert Falls Jr. So she is the new proprietor of the Jungle Cruise. So in 1930, when Dr. Albert Falls vanished, Alberta took control of the company and vowed to preserve the reputation of the Jungle Navigation Company. So very interesting backstory. Let's hear about the five people who are going to be run up the pole in the rhino scene who are all friends of Alberta Falls. So first we've got Felix Petchman the 13th. He recently left his home in Silver Springs, Florida and landed a position as skipper with the Jungle Navigation Company. In an unexpected turn of events, Alberta had no choice but to ask him to lead his very first boat tour with her VIP guests. And the other VIP guests are Dr. Leonard Moss, who is an acclaimed Canadian botanist, Rosa Soto Dominguez, who is known in the art world as La Rosa, she was on her way back to Mexico City from her latest gallery opening in Paris when she received a special invitation from her very close friend Alberta. Dr. Kan Chinasuke, Japan's preeminent etymologist and member of the famed Society of Explorers and Adventurers. That's very interesting. Siobhan Puffin Murphy, who's traveled all the way from a small island of Dingle, Ireland to pay a surprise visit to her distant cousin twice removed on her father's side, Alberta. So I'm definitely excited for all of the changes coming to Jungle Cruise and I'm excited to see a more eclectic cast among the animatronics and among the characters on the Jungle Cruise. I'm really excited to see what the storyline looks like as it progresses through the changes that are coming to the Jungle Cruise. So now that we're off of the Jungle Cruise, it's time to put in our mobile order for these pot stickers over here at Sunshine Tree Terrace. All right, we're gonna test mobile order. You can see the line, maybe like 20 people deep. 
I'm gonna hit, I'm here, prepare my order. We'll see how long it takes. It is 1.17 right now. Exactly one minute later. All right, so here is my I Lava You float. Fanta strawberry soda on the bottom down here. Passion fruit flavor with Dole Whip orange and top with popping candy. Kind of see that popping candy on top and it's actually, you can hear it popping. It's like, sounds like a little volcano. I have to try this first because it's kind of cool today, but it is hot enough to melt this. So we're gonna give this a try first and then we'll get into the pot stickers. All right, sorry for the extreme close up. I'm just like, I'm sitting down here and I've got a nice spot to set up the camera. So let's try this orange Dole Whip with some popping candy in it right now. Oh, that's fun. I think this will be really fun for kids. Also, the passion fruit and the orange go really well together. You hear this? That's the, uh, the Pop Rocks happening inside my mouth. I'm gonna put the straw in and try some of the Fanta down in the bottom. But I like the orange and the passion fruit and the Pop Rocks all mixed, mixed together. It's very refreshing. I feel like the weakest part of this whole thing is the, the strawberry Fanta at the bottom. If I could just get this, like the Pop Rocks and the passion fruit flavoring and the orange soft serve, this is fantastic. I did want to point out that there is kind of a hollow hole right down the center from where they poured the soft serve in. Now it's time for the pot stickers. These are pork and vegetable with orange sesame ginger dipping sauce. Let's see. Oh, that's really good. The dipping sauce is kind of sweet though. I feel like I, I wish that it was a little bit more savory, but I like this. The pot stickers are cooked well. The, the filling is great. Kind of see how much filling is inside there. I would order this again. It's a nice little snack. I'm gonna try it without the dipping sauce. That's what the inside looks like without the dipping sauce in it. It's really good. You can tell that they're actually handmade rather than uh, like frozen pot stickers. But I like it with the sauce better than by itself. It's like you can taste everything. You can taste the sesame, you can taste the ginger, and you can taste the orange in this sauce. I kind of want that on like an entire dish like with noodles and everything. I don't even like noodles, but this sauce is really good. Oh my goodness, I almost missed the opportunity. Do you guys see? Not a cloud in the sky. Wow, like for real, not a cloud in the sky. All right, one last stop before we head out. We're gonna head over into Tomorrowland and check on Tron. I will say if you're ever in Magic Kingdom and you're passing by this large grassy area that's to the right of the castle, just keep your eyes out. I have seen rabbits in this section of grass multiple times. So you might see a rabbit. You never know, like a special Disney rabbit. We got our first glimpse of Tron over here by the Tomorrowland Speedway. Not a really good view of it at the moment though. Let's go over by Barnstormer and see if we can see anything better. Also, just noticed that the people mover was moving, but nobody is on it at the moment. They're still working on it. As we're getting closer to the Barnstormer, I was noticing that Casey Jr. splash and soak. Casey Jr. himself, the locomotive, is behind bushes here. So I don't know if that means that they're working on him. Like maybe repainting him. Oh yeah, you can you can see they're they're refurbishing him. They're repainting in there. You can kind of see through the bushes a little bit. Right there. So we know. That's why he's behind bushes, because they are refurbishing him. So this area has been closed since the park reopened. So there has not been a splash pad available in the Magic Kingdom. We're going to the left of Barnstormer because there is a little area back here where we can get a closer view at the Tron construction. So we can see they are still working on the awning that is out in front of the ride itself. But the one thing you can see is that they have, you see these brown pieces of metal? Those are all temporary supports for underneath the white permanent metal. And you can see they've removed them all from this section out here. So this section is supporting itself under its own weight, but they're still working on this area back here. You can see there's a lot of those brown sections of metal over here because they're still working on it. Occasionally you can see a flash from somebody welding maybe, or that's just a reflection off of somebody's hat. But there are people up there working on the roller coaster right now. Or at least on the awning. I think the roller coaster section's all done. But if you remember back, the last time that we were here, we noticed that they walled off the area where the track goes back into the building at the top here, which was very confusing because we weren't sure why they did that. 
Now we can't even see that through all of the mess of metal here. Pretty good view though. I'm excited for this to open. I don't think it's gonna open for the 50th because it seems like they have a lot to do before October 1st. And they are moving kind of slow. But it just says, now programming. We don't know when it's gonna open. You can see they still have concrete to pour. You can see rebar sticking out of these footers down here. People Mover is moving fairly constantly. I just saw a ride vehicle come through and now I'm seeing another one go by right here. So I think they're starting to return to normal operations. Still no guests on, but I have a feeling it will happen soon. This is exciting. The People Mover is just going through constantly. Hello. Just running constantly. There comes another one right now. It's running like a well-oiled machine now. Even though we're seeing lots of ride vehicles moving around the track, this attraction is not operating today. Please enjoy other Tomorrowland attractions. Before we leave, I'm gonna stop into Uptown Jewelers, see if they have any new merch in there, any new dresses or new purses. Oh, we have some like Dalmatian outfits, not just dresses, got a cardigan and a shirt, like a bowling shirt, as well as the ears to complete the outfit. Oh, okay, so for $168, you get the dress with the Dalmatian and the one scene from 101 Dalmatians where the humans match their dogs. And it comes with the cardigan as well. What's the P for, Perdita? I think so. This is very nice. Something on the back? Not with this one, I think. But look, there's Big Ben down here. Oh, and a call box over here? How neat is that? So not only is there this dress from 101 Dalmatians, there's also this shirt, which is $60. I thought it would be silk, but it is, it's still a very soft, like rayon type material, but it's not as soft as silk, not as flowy as silk, still a little bit stiff. It looks like a bowling shirt. Oh. Pongo's Pins, it is a bowling shirt. How much fun is that? I like this a lot. So for $128, we have this park shirt. It's got all kinds of different items from the parks. We've got Astro Orbiters here. You got the Millennium Falcon, you got the teacups, Space Mountain, Spaceship Earth, the castle. It says, watch the fireworks. I think that's Minnie riding a carousel horse. There's Goofy on Astro Orbiter. We got Tower of Terror over here. Grab a sweet treat. Ride it again. This is nice. Such a fun color too. It says Walt Disney World, play in the park. And it comes with the belt and everything. What a fun print. I like the colors a lot and I like the design. Also, you could wear this lounge fly with it where it's got different, you know, space, space mountain cars, a pirate, a churro, the goat from Big Thunder Mountain, the hitchhiking ghosts, the pirate with the pig, the Yeti, sword in the stone. Nice, oh, the Skyway. We don't have a Skyway anymore. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Well, that's a neat lounge fly. Only got a couple of those. You got Big Al up here, you got Dumbo, Orange Bird. Is this a different print? No, I think it's the same print. Oh, they're riding an omnibus. That's interesting. Wonder why they're not on the trolley. Huh, sorry, I got distracted by the characters going by on the omnibus, but this lounge play is $75. And each one is different. Well, this one's similar to this one, but it's, it's a little bit different. You can see the Dapper Dan is over here versus over here. So each print, each bag is just slightly different than the next. Looks like they're doing a little bit of filming, maybe for a commercial or something here. So I don't know what it's for though. I don't see anybody or any actors anywhere around. But the guy does have a tennis ball. Like you're gonna be somebody needs to be talking to an animated figure. So I heard some rumors around that this was for American Idol. So that makes sense. Does anybody here that you see, do you see anybody that you recognize from American Idol? Balloons? Maybe it's something to do with balloons. Oh, okay, Team Mets. Is there somebody that's on American Idol named Mets? And here comes the omnibus with the characters on it. Passing through. There's Rabbit and Tigger and Piglet and Pooh. 
Hi, Piglet. So I'm guessing that's Hunter right there. And maybe he's a competitor on American Idol. And that's his family that just surprised him at Walt Disney World. That was really interesting to see how they were filming a scene for American Idol here. Basically what it was is his family, his name is Hunter Metz, and his family was there to surprise him. And boy, was he surprised. So, so there you have it. That was our trip to the Magic Kingdom. Check on the castle embellishments, which look really good. Go on the Jungle Cruise, which I'm excited to see how that's going to turn out and how it's changing and how the story is going to progress and what the new story will be and how they're going to tell it as they go around the Jungle Cruise. I'm just excited to ride a new ride and a new iteration of an old ride. I love when they make changes because it's always something new and it's always so exciting to see happen. Also, we get to try that I Lava You Dole Whip, which was fantastic, as well as those pot stickers were really good. I like both of those things. Then we got to see Tron, which is happening. I just don't know when it's gonna open. It seems like the construction is taking a very long time. I know that Velocicoaster started after Tron did, and Velocicoaster is nearly complete. Then we got to check out some new merch, and we got to see a little bit of filming for American Idol, which was very exciting. So all in all, a fantastic day. The weather was great. The park was great. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see you all tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.